Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. This is Dr. Sana Khan and today uh, we're going to discuss a very important topic which is not only important to learn but also uh, whenever you're in your clinical setup, this is the most important case which is encountered uh, whenever you're in a, even in a, in a clinical setting, right? So we're talking about the intestinal obstruction and in this particular, uh, I have divided this uh, this topic into two lectures. So initially, in this lecture, we will be talking about the classification of the intestinal obstruction, uh, like uh, there's a dynamic obstruction, there's a dynamic obstruction, and uh, in case of the dynamic obstruction, there is uh, there is actually a mechanical obstruction and paracelsus is present but there is a mechanical obstruction and in case of adynamic obstructions uh, there is no paracelsus and there is no mechanical obstruction uh, which are the paralytic ileus and you know the pseudo obstructions as well and in case of dynamic or the mechanical obstructions like there can be some intraluminal causes there can be intramural causes there can be extramural causes for so we will be talking about all these causes in this particular lecture today and we'll be discussing these one by one about the classification. Plus uh, we'll also talk about the pathophysiology of the intestinal obstruction. Actually, whenever uh, there is uh, there is an obstruction in the segment of the intestine, and uh, what happens is that that there is uh, initially there is increase in the peristaltic activity. Then, if the obstruction is not relieved for a very long time, the peristaltic activity is reduced. Then, actually, what happened that there is inflammatory cascade, uh, which is uh, being uh, you know uh, being produced at that place in a lot of cytokines and the reaction active oxygen species, they are produced and ultimately they lead to the increase in the capillary permeability and whole of the inflammatory process is being initiated and then uh, that also compromise the venous blood supply and also compromise the arterial blood supply and whenever the arterial blood supply is compromised there is actually uh, the gangrene or initially the ischemia of the gut and then ultimately that lead to the gangrene. So this will be talking about the pathophysiology in detail. Uh, we'll be talking about the strangulation because most of the time the hernias uh, they present to you uh, with obstruction or strangulation and uh, they are basically the surgical emergencies. So we will be talking about the uh, strangulations as well. We'll be talking about the closed loop obstruction, uh, particularly uh, what do you mean by a closed loop obstruction when a proximal segment is being obstructed, when a distal segment is being obstructed, and uh, from distal, from proximal to distal, the portion of the guard is dilated, that is called a closed loop obstruction. And in case of the closed loop obstruction, if we only, you know, uh, resect the segment or, you know, we just need the uh, need the knot or the uh, obstructed segment po uh, segment of the intestine is being needed, uh, so that release the uh, particular um, uh, obstruction. So we'll be talking about the closed loop obstruction. We will be talking about the mechanical obstruction types like the intraluminal causes, the extramural causes, the intramural causes, and particularly uh, the intraluminal causes like the bolus obstruction. There can be obstruction secondary to the gallstones which are slipping all the way from the gallbladder to the common bile duct and then duodenum and then involving any of the segment of the intestine and we'll be talking about the unchewed, undigested food matter which is being impacted in the lumen and that causes the obstruction. We'll also be talking about uh, different kind of the uh, other um, causes for the intraluminal mechanical obstruction that like the stercolith and the worms particularly about the scarce lumbricides. We'll, be, we'll also be talking about the you know um, gallstones and other uh, trichobazars like the psychiatric illness in which you are when the patient is actually chewing up the hair and also we'll be talking about the uh, phytobazars in which there's a high fiber diet in your food and that lead to the obstruction. So we'll be talking about all the causes of the mechanical intestinal obstruction and uh, there are also 
and some other causes which are extramural causes particularly adhesions of the band which can be uh, because of, which can be formed post infection or post surgery and post infection most of the time it is uh, typhoid tuberculosis Crohn's disease they're actually involving the different kind of the uh, formation of the adhesions in the bands and the stricter formation as well so we'll be talking about them plus uh, if we do any extensive uh, surgery involving the gut or the abdomen, they can also formation of the band. We'll be talking about the prevention, particularly if we use this good surgical technique or good su suture material use, uh, securing the anastomosis, covering side, wash of the peritoneal cavity. We'll be talking about all of these things in detail. And then we'll be talking about intussusception, which is the most common cause of the intestinal obstruction in the children. We'll be talking about the different types of the intussusception, different parts of the intussusception, and we'll be also talk about the valvulus, a condition in which, uh, you know, uh, the segment of the intestine is twisted upon itself, and there are different types of the valvulus. They can be because of the congenital required, and in case of the valvulus, neonatorium, malrotated gut, uh, in case of the malrotated gut, there's a twisting, and in case of the adult um, sigmoid valvulus, Cecal valvulus, these valvulus are very much common. So we'll be talking about these, the types of the valvulus, uh, we'll be talking all. And there are a number of other lectures which are present on uh, scardia.com. You can always go there, visit and subscribe uh, to the channel for that. And thank you for watching uh, scardia.com. Keep watching for a detailed lecture.